मैम सदर को I request everyone to stand for school song. <laughs> Special guest, respected principal, administrative officer, 
Vice Principal, Senior Master, Distinguished Alumni, Faculty Members, Administrative Staff, and my dear cadets, a grand welcome to everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a matter of great pride and honor for all of us that today we have been blessed to have amongst us Honorable Chief Guest, Lovely General Pradeep Nayar, Ati Vishishta Seva Medal, Yudha Seva Medal, PhD, Director General of Assam Rifles. Special Guest, Mr. Bhushan Malhotra, Colonel Narsimha Mudakatte, Retired, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Arvind Kumar Sina, Retired, Colonel Sachin Nimbarka, V. Chakra for today's function. May I now request Group Captain Ujjal Ghormare, Principal Senior School Satara, to kindly come on stage and extend a formal welcome. Sir, please. On behalf of Sanisu Satara, all the cadets of Sanisu Satara, the teaching staff, the admin staff, the general employees, and all the officers, on behalf of them, I welcome Captain General P.C. Nair, ABSM, YSM, Director General of Assam Rifles. I also welcome Colonel Sachin Nimarkar, Veer Chakra, Lieutenant Colonel Arvind Sinha, retired, Colonel Mutkate, retired, all the senior alumni of this school who have made it a point to be here, to hear Reference General Nair, Colonel Nimbarkar, and another important event that is the release of a book, which is coined by the three alumni of our school. It's a great privilege for the school, sir, that you are here. Not only you, sir, the other alumni are also here. And cadets, let me tell you, these alumni are here. They have come from so far, travelled so much of kilometers, just to make a difference in the grooming which takes place in Sanisu Satara. We should all be thankful and grateful to them that they have taken out time to come and motivate you to join National Defence Academy and get groomed in the Sanisu Satara to face the life ahead after you pass out from this school. It is my proud privilege that during my tenure, it is the second time that Sarah has come here. And I am sure after Sarah's speech, the Limbarka's speech, you will be mesmerized and will have a vision to understand, see how the grooming of Sanisu Satara has led them to such great heights. Also, the book which is going to be released will unfold a lot of fruits which take place in this, which have taken place and continue to take place in this Sanisu Satara. Once again, a very hearty welcome to you all, sir. Or oh, hello to like to Mrs. Kadam for further proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I request you, sir, to kindly stay on stage for felicitation ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a proud moment for the school to felicitate its esteemed, worthy gems and the proud alumni. May I now request Mr. Bhushan Malhotra to kindly come on stage and accept the felicitation, sir, please.
thank you, sir, for accepting this token of remembrance. A school member to his staff. I request you, sir, to kindly stay on stage. Sir, please. I now invite Colonel Nasima Mukate, retired on stage, and accept the felicitation. Sir, please. Thank you, sir, for accepting this felicitation. I also request you to kindly see on stage. I now request Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Arvind Sina to kindly come on stage and accept the felicitation. Sir, please. The entire team, the author of the book, Andrew Floyd. I request you, sir, to kindly stay on stage. I now request Colonel Sachin Imbarkar, Veer Shakra, to kindly come on stage and accept the felicitation. Thank you, sir. I now would like to invite Lieutenant General Pradeep Naya, ABSM, YSM, PhD, DG, Assam Rifles, to kindly come on stage and accept the felicitation. Sir, please. I request you to come and stay on stage for the book unveiling ceremony. I would like to invite our administrative officer and vice principal to kindly come on stage and join the elite guests who are with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, Untold Truth Volume 2, Zindagi Ka Safar, celebrating the time post-COVID on their profession has been made by the entire team Colonel Nasima Mudkate, Mr. Bhushan Malhotra, and Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Arvind Kumar Sinha. And today it is its official launch. I request the trial team and all the dignitaries on stage to kindly unveil the book. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Chief Volume 1, Niti Gabe, is already out and all copies are available are in our library for our young readers. Volume 1 did not have its official launch due to COVID pandemic. Thank you everyone. I request everyone to kindly take your seats, please.
Ladies and gentlemen, I now take this opportunity to introduce the special guest, a proud alumnus, Latin Colonel Dr. Arvind Kumar Sinha, retired to the August gathering. Dr. Arvind Kumar Sinha, retired, has been the Vice President of Logical Flight Society, VFS International Board of Directors, President of VHS International Australia Chapter, Dr. Alexander Clement Awardi, Honorary Fellow of the University of Melbourne and Ambassador Aerospace for Club Melbourne. Sir has been has a service record of 45 years, which includes defense forces, establishments, industry, and academic institutions. He held several positions such as specialist advisor, senior researcher, manager and director, and officer commanding of military units in operation. Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Arvind Kumar Sina holds three postgraduate degrees in electronic engineering, aerospace technology, and business administration, and has a PhD in aerospace engineering, multi-mission helicopter design. So, served in armed forces, several elite units and establishment of defense electronic warfare, airborne forces, aviation and command of units in glacier operations. Sir was awarded several academic and institutional awards, including military operations, medals, and combatant paratrooper and skydiving wings. In the civil arena, Sir has been a professor at the university and the director of Commercial Aerospace and Aviation Research Center. Presently, Dr. Sina leads the establishment of helicopter design courses and projects in UG and PG aerospace programs at Australian universities and sports and supervises their design teams participating in. Ladies and gentlemen, with this introduction, may I now invite Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Arvind Kumar Sinha to kindly come on stage and address the gathering. So please. Right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's an honor. I have flown in from the farthest place on this planet, from Satara, that is Melbourne, Australia. So today I consider, on behalf of all first decade uh, alumni, just to give you a small little journey of the untold truth, how it unfolded like the principle rightly said. So it was only in the 80s, 1980s, the vision of Colonel Wire Puri during the time we were there, and Mr. Ghargesar and others, to form an association, how to link the alumni together. It never existed since the school started in 61, I think the first pass out was 63 or 64. So, in 80, the formation started, and uh, Mr. W, sorry, your name was Bhushan Malhotra, I remember you W. <laughs> so, Bhushan Malhotra, sir, I should say, sir, uh, he led the complete team and formed the association. And it's been 42 years or so. This is what has brought us in. And one of the vision that time certainly was that somehow neither the school nor the alumni has really captured in documentary. You see, it's a document which finally makes a difference to how to document the founding of the school and thereafter of his alumni. I was given a task that I up, I think, uh, Mutkate, sir, we are in the army together. I said, I got an idea and I already had two things when the best ideas come out. <laughs> so I rang him up and he linked me up with the group and we said, let's do it. Now was linking those 300 students after how many 55, 60 years, linking them up and bringing the morale up to write something. So the key issue is when you give out the book, how authentic it is. So we said, let the students write themselves. And that was the birth of untold truths. All that what happened in the school, written by the students, totally collaborated. It so happened that the forefront was the sir, who linked with all the students, who took all the dirty work to talk to them, to motivate them to write. Remember all that happened. And it was Mukate sir, who was finally putting all together and sending it to me in Melbourne. And we are meeting first time today, incidentally, after releasing two books, personally we are meeting first time and it all came to me and to save the money, we said, okay, me being an aerospace designer, I said minor things, I've designed right now for designing a book. So I took on, made the complete format in the graphic.
graphics and all that and they kept sending me photos in which you can't even recognize I had to de photoshop and do all those funny things and finally we got a book up and that was we said now this is where they have written about the school and quick in the next 2-3 minutes I will say we called it volume 1 to cover the times in the school what were the times in the school, all their memories what they learned, so those were the founding years that is and we said we certainly can't capture the full students till date we said let's capture the first 10 years and name it as first decade so the first decade students capturing the founding years, the founding years of the school of 10 years that was the volume 1, till they were in school as students I was receiving the articles and all the funny things started coming out I remember the house table caught fire, am I right sir? Horse table caught fire and somebody wrote an article that you remember the house table caught fire and the horses ran away to the city, correct? And there was another person writing that I lit the fire. <laughs> the aerospace person, he said, that's not the end. Or oh, what value is the book? Those are incidences in the school. But what, what value is the book to the young? All these people sitting. So again I spoke to them, why not have a volume two? We wrote till we passed out from school, right? What passing out from school, all the challenges which we face in our profession. So that is volume two, which is Zindagi ka Safar when the school let us out. Now the life journey has started till we retire. So everybody wrote about their professional experience and then I clubbed down. Please make it down like a military man, lessons learned. So those lessons of every profession is there for the young to see. If you join the army, maybe air force or join the whatever profession, the lessons which are there, which will be of value to everybody. So that is where the volume two comes to an end. So that was a brief of the journey. And now we will first take it, now it's upon the next 10 years students. If they want to take it on, we have data park, we have data foundation. We three are always available to give you the intelligent advice. Okay, we look intelligent. We have done it finally. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if I may say so, for the students, for the morale, a person like me, who is world renowned as an aerospace designer, all the aircraft which you see in the sky today have been part of all the designs in the last like, 35. If me as a student from this school can rise to that, anyone can rise. Do you all agree? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Rise to the highest, take all the challenges, take it on, keep your focus, keep your scope, and you shall achieve your goal. Thank you very much, Principal. Thank you very much. God bless. And everyone is welcome to Australia whenever you want. A lovely land and a lovely person like me over there. Yes. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir, so much for unfolding the journey of untold truth. Volume 2. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to introduce the esteemed alumnus, Colonel Sachin Nimbarkar, Veer Chakra, to the gathering. Colonel Sachin Nimbarkar, Veer Chakra presently posted with a decorate general Assam rifle, is proud alumnus of Sail Sudara. He joined NDA in 1993 after completion of training from IMA, was commissioned into 18 Grenadiers in June. 1997. He has experience of serving in the counter insurgency in JNK, Assam, high altitude areas, and UN peacekeeping operation in Syria. He has also represented India at SCO, regional anti terrorist structure. He commanded 20 grenadiers in high altitude area, Operation Meghu. The officer talented important staff and instructional appointments as training battalion commander of Grenadiers Regimental Center, General Staff Officer 1, at Army Headquarters and instructed Class C at OTA Chennai. Colonel Sachin Imbarkar has been awarded with Chakra while serving with 18 Grenadiers during the Kargil War in 1999. He was awarded GOC C Commendation Card while serving with the Grenadiers Regimental Center. The officer is happily married to Mrs. Deepa and they are blessed with two sons, Master Shreyas and Master Dutch. With these words, may I now request Colonel Sachin Imbarkar with Chakra to kindly come on stage and address the gathering. So please. Uh, Jane, uh, 
respected Lieutenant General PC Nayak, FTC Seva Medal, Youth Seva Medal, PhD, Director General Assam Rifles, uh, respected Principal, Adam Oxford, Headmaster, uh, my dear uh, senior alumni, the non teaching staff, and most importantly, delivered students of Sunday School Satara, <coughs> where I sat uh, a few years back like you, and I would uh, take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the school, to the teaching faculty, to the support staff, because uh, not only uh, academically that I view here, but the character and the values that imbibe in, in, imbibe in this school, they stand with me even today, and I am sure I shall be following by them in the time I am alive. Uh, few days back, I just heard the uh, address given by Lieutenant Colonel Shashikan on uh, success and failure. Just before I start my talk, I wanted to give a small introduction to my unit. I wanted to relate uh, to this topic of success and failure. Uh, as he said, as he rightly said, that failure is part of the success. And uh, when my unit was there, that is my unit business was there in. Uh, a JNK uh, in one of the very, uh, you can say, terrorist and insurgency infested area of Bandipur. And it was unheard of in those days from January of 98 till January of 99. My battalion did not have a single uh, success to show. And it was unheard in those days because every look at corner, every uh, 10 meters you walk, you would have one encounter, but uh, my battalion had no success. And you can just imagine the kind of pressures, especially army officers, uh, would uh, realize what is the kind of pressures when you face such a situation. But then the good thing about the unit was that we kept trying, we kept trying. And actually, that was a process, I would say, which helped my unit to do so well in Operation Vijay. And uh, I am very proud to state that one of two of the most important battles which uh, happened during Operation Vijay were uh, Tololing and Tigerin. Why I call them important? Because Tololing was the first success of Indian Army uh, that happened on 13th of June. Till then, we actually had no success to show. And once that first success came, uh, that is how the journey of Indian Army towards Recapturing all the heights which were taken by the intruders uh, started. And why I call Tiger Hill as another important battle because till the uh, capture of Tiger Hill, the Pakistanis were uh, having moral ascendancy because they thought that Tiger Hill is impregnable, it cannot be captured. But once Tiger Hill fell, if you see the events of uh, 99, that is uh, post about 6th or 7th of July, that is when the tide started turning completely towards the Indian side and that's when they agreed for the ceasefire around 26th of July. Uh, as I said, uh, when the operation started, uh, my battalion was there in the JNK, place called Gandharbal. We started moving from Gandharbal at a very short notice and with a very limited kind of information that we got and we reached RAS. You can imagine, en route there are hundreds of people meeting, hundred people telling hundred stories as to actually what is happening. But then once we reached uh, RAS town, thereafter once we got hang of the situation, again coming to <laughs> tunneling battle, uh, coming to the same analogy of success and failure, uh, from 15th of May, the time my battalion was inducted, till the capture of Tololing on 13th of June, finally by the battalion of 2nd Rajputana Rifles. My battalion, we in fact lost the maximum in the battle of Tololing. We launched about 5 or 6 major attacks on Tololing, but we couldn't succeed to capture Tololing feature. But the dent that was made by my battalion actually the setbacks that my battalion faced was instrumental in capture of Tololing uh, by two Rajneet and later on the path that was opened for the 13 Japanese battalion for capture of uh, famous feature of 0.5140 uh, 
in which uh, even today if you see uh, there is a clipping of uh, uh, Paravir Chakra awardee uh, Captain Vikram Batra in which after the capture of uh, 0.5140 he says he did Mange Mohan. So that's how our journey started. Uh, I'll try and keep uh, my presentation uh, in this uh, following edge. Uh, coming to the uh, first thing that is before I come to the terrain proper, I just wanted to give a small uh, areas of inclusion in which the Pakistan is at home. Actually, since post the 1971 operations, there was a kind of unwritten understanding between both the sides that uh, because of the in inhospitable terrain and the area of Dras and Kargil is, uh, if you, if anybody has been to that place, even today also in Dras town there is a board which says that this is the second coldest place uh, on earth, second coldest inhabited place on the planet and the minimum temperature recorded in Dras town was minus 60 degrees in uh, 1993. That board is still there in Dras. So, because of this inhospitable, the heights, heights were ranging from about 14,000 to 18,000 feet. So, the unwritten understanding was both the sites would withdraw to winter vacated posts. That is, some posts were vacated on the line of control and they were reoccupied during the months of summer. And it is humanly impossible to occupy each piece of ground and especially in such an inhospitable terrain and obviously in 1999 there were certain gaps uh, which were exploited by them about 36 kilometers in Moscow, 9 and half kilometers in Tras, uh, 25 kilometers in uh, Tatsar and about 26 kilometers beyond Batalik <laughs> and after Batalik the uh, area of Siachen glacier starts. Now, why they launched this operation was basically in case we go back in history in 1984 uh, when Off Meghut started, that was the time the Pakistanis thought the Siachen to be rightfully their area, whereas as per agreements and as per uh, the understanding of the agreement beyond point NJ9842, the LC should be running northward. So, in order to actually cut off the Le Ladakh and the Siachen Glacier area, they launched this operation and using this traditional gas, they came and occupied the areas which were almost about at places 5 to 6 kilometers inside our territory from line of control. In the next, uh, if you see this, uh, the areas of Tololing and uh, the three people are so close to Dras town. Today, at the base of Tololi feature is a war memorial uh, made after the brave sacrifices of our soldiers. That is at the base of Tololi. So, any man standing on Tololi without any binoculars, without anything, could observe any movement in the Dras town. And the most important thing was the National Highway 1 Alpha, which connected the uh, Srinagar with Leh. They could integrate it and they could bring down effective fire on National Highway 1 Alpha at winds and fences whenever they wanted. So, that was the kind of closeness of Tololing, and that's where our operation started. My battalion was part of Tololing, and uh, finally it was captured, as I said earlier, was, uh, the capture was done by two Rajwe. But our 18th British per se actually lost the maximum uh, casualties that we had out of 34 battle casualties my battalion suffered, 22 were in uh, the battle of uh, Tolon. Uh, location of Tiger Hill, as you see the feature in the photograph, it is uh, very daunting, it is a triangular feature which had absolute domination all over uh, on all the, uh, you can say, all sides, 360 degree domination is that both towards the Pakistani side and towards our side. Uh, any vehicle moving from Dras town, that is from the present day Batra transit camp to uh, Bimbad, any movement on National Highway 1 Alpha could be uh, seen from Tiger Hill uh, and any uh, use of long range weapons was possible from Tiger Hill and as it is 
within tigerel complex also they had uh, you can say anti aircraft guns mortars and other things which finally when it was captured all those recordings i'll show you in the next photo uh, as i said from dras tcp that is it was a batra transit camp to himbad and it was equidistant from both uh, the dras town and from the line of control it was approximately about 5 half kilometers from both the sides uh terrain uh, this area the terrain is absolutely inhospitable during the months of summer it is uh, water scarcity is there the heights are more than 14000 14500 the tiger hill height is almost about 5200 uh, feet lack of tree cover any movement that any time i want to go and attack the feature it was all in the open anybody sitting on the top could observe people coming from down below so in the day time it was just next to impossible to move to do any movement because it was counted by accurate and pinpointed uh, artillery fire in fact in one of the incidences in tolone just one single shell that landed in between the troops were getting ready to capture going for the attack on the next feature of the homes just one single uh, shell of rt to had 13 casualties 13 fatal casualties so that is the kind of observation the enemy had over all this area temperature during the months of winter of course it goes down quite drastically during the summers water is a scarcity and acclimatization without acclimatization you cannot move acclimatization is your body needs some time in high altitude areas that is beyond 9000 feet you need to stay for few days at various sites at 9000 12000 before you can actually launch into any of the physical activity or any of the attacks but however because of the seeing the precarious situation the units were launched by compressing this acclimatization period uh, coming to tiger hill proper just a uh, to orient you you can see the southern spur is the one from where we started this side is the dras town point 44 60 is where the battalion which was already there that is the unit of 86 they had made the bomb base there the southern spur is slightly gradual as you see this is the area of town and this is the complex of tiger hill and on the western side there are features called uh, called india gate and helmet Uh, I am just giving you about this helmet and these two features played very important role during the final capture of Tiger Hill. I come to that. And that places the gradient was more than seventy-five degrees, and we had to place ropes, the mountaineering equipment to climb. And that places the it was like say ten. 10 feet or say 15 feet wall is just a broken scratch in between we have to help people to uh, rather push from down below so that they could climb up one by one people could climb that's how the uh, terrain was negotiated uh tiger hill what we estimated was would be having about company minus company minus when we say company minus in army parlance it is about say 70 to 80 people about two platoons 30 35 that is what we had expected and the biggest advantage with the enemy was that tiger hill had a very natural gate in which about say 15 to 20 people could uh, be there inside without any problem and plus it gave them natural cover against any of the artillery shelling and any of the heavy weapons uh, fire <laughs> uh, coming to the actual assault as to how it took place uh we started my battalion started already eight six had given us the form base we started on second third of july uh for our first attack the companies of delta the gatar platoon we all started from the southern side that is the uh this This is how we started from southern side, and after about 
3 or 4 kilometers we went towards the eastern side because eastern side what we appreciated was that uh, they would never expect somebody to be coming from eastern side because it was absolutely no go without the mountaineering skills without the physical fitness it was just difficult to climb so we came down and thereafter the Charlie and Delta Company we started from and the Gathas Pratun we started from the eastern side but however on the third morning when uh, there is something called as uh, the falls and crests every crest that you are about to climb you feel as if you are going to reach the top so every falls crest we would think that we are about to reach the top and even early morning the Pakistanis, the intruders they didn't realize that somebody could come from the eastern side and as soon as the first party of about 3 to 4 boys when they reached the crest of Tiger Hill that is just about say 20 meters from Tiger Hill that is when the Pakistanis realized that somebody has come from this side and they were totally, totally taken by surprise but the only issue was that the entire balance company and the Gata platoon was still on that a very narrow slope the, on both the side of the slope was the fall of almost about 300 400 feet so that is when they realized they started firing but because we had not reached in the numbers we could uh, actually progress ahead with the assault and we had to retreat back to uh, say about 100 150 meters the next assault by then it the Tiger Hill operation had become a media news then and all the live coverage you can say whatever was possible then was coming directly being streamed into the homes and since there was another attack which was going on towards the uh, western side this is 0.4875 in which finally uh, Captain Batra uh, was uh, attend the uh, martyrdom so, 0.4875 was another battle which was going on. So, there was a lot of push from our side. Fourth, fifth night, again we ventured. This time we were slightly better prepared. The Gathaks and Delta Company went from again from the eastern side, from, from this side. Again, we started on fourth, fifth. This time, what happened? We were able to reach as close as 15 meters with about 20 boys deployed on ground and the balance of the company was on that slope the fire fight on 4th 5th morning continued for almost about 2 and a half 3 hours and there there was a lull for that is when they the Pakistanis actually counter attacked on us and we were left we were actually in a precarious uh, situation we, People who were there in the front, six of them were killed on spot. They could have actually killed us just by rolling the boulders on ground. And there was uh, balance of the company was on that small, you can say in in the you can say a small company was there. Balance of the company was there. One of the radio sets which I had. Two radio sets, one with me and one with uh, Major Panwan Singh, who got Mahavir Chakra. One radio set actually fell into the valley. The second radio set, ANPRC, was the radio set which was used then, quite a old kind of radio set. The small wires which connect the handset, they were broken, but somehow we were able to place it and speak to the CEO. CEO was somewhere. He was somewhere here, he was able to see as to what is actually happening on ground and when left with no option, we had already lost about 8-9 uh, boys, when left with no option, I had to call for RT fire and you can imagine the uh, distance, that is the go force when it was firing, when it fires, the danger area is almost more than about 200 meters, had it been in place, it could have actually taken us off and no option was there. Uh, I asked for artillery focus fire. The battery commander of the artillery who is there with the CO, he said he survived the fire system because he could have taken us also. But then during that time, that one minute also looks like as if hours have gone past and uh, why is RT not coming? Why is RT not coming? 
Then again I spoke to the CEO, I said, sir, we already lost so many boys and you can write off another balance of the company easily, they can just overrun us. That is the time my CEO, Mr. Kushal Thakur, he decided, he told the battery commander, you just go ahead with the fire, let's take the risk. There is, in any case, we are losing, we will have lost another 20, 30 minimum. So he said, okay, you fire. And by God's grace, the first three shells that came, the two shells came bang on target where actually we wanted. They came bang on this area of the Tiger Hill. That is when the Pakistanis thought probably Navati fires started and they started moving back. The third artillery, that is the Bokor shell, which came, was just about 10 meters on the right of us. Had it been, say, maximum 2 or 3 meters, it would have taken all of us who were all standing on that uh, slope. And on 5th morning, another incident which happened was the action of Yoginder Singh Yadav somewhere here. When the Pakistani counter attack came, he was hit by about 8 9 bullets. And when the Pakistanis, they were coming, they were hitting the, you can say, mortal remains of all the soldiers just to check whether they have died or not. They hit him also. He was already injured about with 8 9 bullets. But when they were retreating back, that is the time probably the individual thought that he may not survive and uh, he opened fire on them. He had a challenge with him. He had regrets. He used them. And why I say getting Paramir Chakra is the ultimate. But the just why I want to bring out his feet here is there is something called as will to survive. And in whatever condition you are, if you have got this one thing in your mind that I have to survive, you will survive. Just imagine in the terrain like this, being hit by nine bullets and if on his own he challenges the retreating enemy, thereafter he comes down crawling on his own for almost about 150 to 200 meters on his own, just see the terrain, the stones, the razor sharp stones which were there, he uh, negotiated everything, thereafter he came where we were there, then he was evacuated. So it is the, if the human mind has got this thing in it that I have to survive from what may he will survive. So Yoginder Singh Yadav is the finest example of will to survive. <laughs> then fifth morning we came down, there was you can say partial foothold that we had got but it was still not sufficient and again 7th, 8th, night we launched the attack. Every time we used to go from the eastern side because it was difficult and uh, it could surprise them. But however this time just a slight alteration in plan was made and the Alpha company which was here, they were told to start from the southern side which was a very obvious approach or in the uh, you can say total observation of the enemy but they were told to start and with uh, you can say a uh, huge war cry or huge noise to make it obvious that we are coming to attack from the southern side. So probably the intruders that was our aim also and probably the intruders the Pakistanis they thought that the attack is going to come from this side that is the southern side this time. So this was on 7th, 8th of night. And to counter that attack, if you see the terrain, at places there is something called as defiladed. That means I cannot see what is next to me. So in order to see the approaching enemy, some of the intruders, they came down to counter the attack from the Alpha company. And that is the time when, when this was happening, we again started from the eastern side, the Gathaks, now this time uh, joined by Brow company. And we could reach the Tiger Hill top around 2, 2.30 in the night. And that is the time they were actually sandwiched between the Delta company, Nathaks and Rao company which had reached the top and the Alpha company on the southern side. And that is when, when we finally captured on 7th, 8th night, there were about 8, 9 of them who were there on Tiger Hill top. Balance of them were in between trying to counter our Alpha company. And finally, using all our resources, 
we were able to capture on uh, tiger hill, find the complete tiger hill complex on 7th day night around 2:30 uh, the final capture of uh, tiger hill took place You can see another photo of Tiger Hill, which gives out the general locations. Just before going ahead, I want to bring a very important and significant act of Cape Sick, which I mentioned earlier. When these first two assaults of my battalion were repulsed, why this was happening was another reason was the western side, that is the area of this India Gate, India Gate and Helmet was the area which was uh, open for the Pakistanis to reinforce any time uh, they wanted to reinforce and whenever what used to happen whenever one feature was attacked they would reinforce that feature before that. Now we had lost two attacks both the attacks were repulsed now to cut off the, the line of reinforcement which was coming from India Gate. Uh, the company of 8 Sikh was asked to go and occupy that. Now, the company of 8 Sikh occupied that, and in one of the very short and intense engagement of Operation Vijay, in half an hour time, the casualties on both the sides was 26 people killed, which included 3 JCOs and 10 other ranks of 8 Sikh. And a Pakistani officer called Kamal Sher, along with his party, they lost about 12-13 uh, people. When they were coming to reinforce the Tiger Hill, that is the time they found the company of 8 Sikh which was there, already uh, cut off, they had cut off the access towards Tiger Hill. Now probably this officer, the Pakistani officer would have gone back seeing the 8 Sikh company, but then he decided to attack the it's sick company because he somehow wanted to make a way and reach Tiger Hill. That is when, in this short engagement, uh, the gallant action of Eight Sick actually was one of the another reason which was instrumental in capture of Eight Sick. So this is a, a great cooperation and camaraderie between two units uh, of Indian Army, which actually paved the way for capture of Tiger Hill. This is the. Uh, Photograph uh, after the capture of Tiger Hill. Uh, my battalion, rightfully, uh, we had uh, the casualties as shown on the new point. We had 34 fatal and about 78 injured of them. Uh, about 10 to uh, 8 to 10 people are disabled for lifelong. They have been looked after by the Indian Army and the various state governments, but they are disabled. And we have 34 uh, Sayvards who actually sacrificed their life for the nation, for the safety and integrity of this nation. Uh, the recoveries as I was talking, uh, the unexpended portion of ammunition that after so much of almost about 50, about 40, 45, 50 days of war, what we actually got back was about 80 mule loads. That was the unexpected portion of ammunition which was there on Tiger Hill. And apart from the weapons that you see, heavy caliber weapons, the 2 mm mortars, the anti aircraft gun, the UMGs, and host of other small arms. So just imagine the kind of stocking that I am talking of only the ammunition, the ration that was left, that is a different issue altogether. So they were quite well prepared to sustain themselves for a longer time. These are the photographs of weapons. And at places we also recovered the mines in one of the incidents in uh, in Tololay when the major Adhikari uh, mortal remains were recovered actually they had placed the mine below his uh, mortal remains. So wherever they found that now the situation is precarious or they have to make it, they would just spew the mines all around and withdraw. Uh, rightfully for the, uh, the 
capture of sonorin and pyrin by botanical eating videos happens to be the highest decorated unit as per for one single operation going in terms of numbers but however as per the highest number of awards it is the uh, 13 chakras they got two parmin chakras my botanical got one parmin chakra two mahir chakra one for uh, major balwan singh uh, he is serving uh, presently in jaisalmer the second one was for major adhikari the six vir chakras six vir chakras included uh, one of the finest officer that i have come across in my life was lieutenant colonel r vishnathan r yc and uh, people would vouch we all talk of uh, so many of character traits but if you have to see all those character traits amalgamated in one individual that was colonel vishnathan uh, when he was hit by a bullet we actually tried to evacuate him in the operation of tolulin and uh, there were other casualties also who were i had uh, just uh, there is a feature called barbar bunker below the actual tolulin that is where other injured were there and in spite of previously injured the twice he had to tell me vishnathan said ki aap tum bakiyon ko bachao jo bach sakte hain main bach sakta hu kyunki he had uh, heavy bleeding so just imagine the kind of uh, camaraderie the spirit we pour that comes out in an officer even when he knows that he is going to be no more and that is the time he is telling us others that you go and evacuate the others who could be rescued and who can uh, be saved uh, rest awards are as shown on the viewpoint the unit was also got the coveted uh, chief of army staff commendation card uh unit uh, on the next card then the battle honor for tolulin and tiger hill and the petro honor for kargil uh, this is the photograph after the capture of uh, tolulin when chief of army staff had visited uh, the unit this is the officers of 18th grade this is rco receiving the unit citation this is uh, then havalda now subdar major retired uh yoginder singh yadav uh some of the most important lessons i just wanted to highlight don't worry about this slide what we get to imbibe in ourselves in while studying in senior school is exactly what is there in indian army we have to feel for each other that camaraderie has to be built we have to build the morale in the unit that is the first prerequisite for any success or uh, of a unit so those are the lessons which actually came in handy because we were uh, getting you can say uh, not doing not very well but in spite of that in the uh, counter insurgency environment but in spite of that the officers were able to keep the morale of the unit high and that's what actually paid finally as young officer the most important thing is the physical fitness other tactics and other issues will be taught to you whenever you join the indian army and the another thing which actually turned the tide in our favor was the leadership of the young officers who gave their all they sacrificed their life in fact the the officer casualties during operation vijay was one of the highest and the young officers actually led the path when it comes to brass tax when it comes to the crisis it is a simple formula you just have to say i will lead you for them and that is when the jawans the companies platoon will follow you so as a officer that is the most important thing that we need to lead from front come what may even if it is at the cost of one's life I finished. Uh, should anyone have any questions? I would be <coughs> please to answer them. Thank you, sir. Jai. thank you very much sir for sharing your experiences about operation vision also for an 
important and informative presentation. Thank you once again. Ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity once again to introduce the chief guest of the day, the proud alumnus, Lieutenant General Pradeep Nayar, Ati Vishishta Seva Medal, Yuddha Seva Medal, PhD, Director General of Assam Rifles. Lieutenant General Pradeep Nayar, AVSM, YSM, PhD, DG, Assam Rifles, was born on 15th of July, 1964, at Pune. He joined in class 5 and uh, was attached to Nehru House and passed out from this prestigious school from Rana Pratap House. Sir, joined Indian Academy in the year 1982. When he was in the school, he represented the school football team for three consecutive years. He was commissioned into 18th Battalion, the Sikh Regiment of on 14th of December 1985, which he later commanded at Faizabad, Bhakti <coughs> and in subsector Halit, Shiachi Glacier. The general officer has served extensively in Northeast, in Nagaland, Manipur, Assam and Sikkim. He commanded a brigade in Manipur where he was awarded the Yuddha Seva Medal and was Inspector General of Assam Rifles, North in Nagaland. He was decorated the Ati Vishishta Seva Medal. He was also been awarded the Chief of Army Staff Commendation Card on three occasions. He has talented instructor, instructional appointments at Infantry School Mao, Headquarters Indian Military Training Team, Bhutan, and has been directing staff at Defense Services Staff College, Wellington, Uti. He has been Brigadier General Staff in an area headquarter and was responsible for matters related to North East in the Defense Intelligence Agency. He was the Director General Recruiting at Army Headquarters prior taking over as Director General Assam at Sri He did his PhD recently in 2022 on a subject re related to the North East. Sir has been visiting the school regularly for excellent meets and also for motivational talks to our cadets. As the Brigadier General Staff at Headquarters MGNG area in Mumbai, he formed the part of LBA and also inspected the school in 2015. So visited in his alma mater in the year 2021 and the general officer is married to Mrs. Pushpa Nayar and they have a son and a daughter. With these words, may I now invite our honorable chief guest on stage and please address the cat. So please. A very good morning to you all. I must thank Sarah for that uh, very, very long, elaborate introduction, which almost put half the audience here to sleep. Uh, notwithstanding, let me begin by uh, thanking the principal, the Captain Kudwas, for having invited me over. Uh, yet again, during his tenure, as he said, for the second time, uh, in the same line, I would also want to thank. The vice principal, the uh, Republican Manisha, who just recently come here and told. The administrator of the proposed whom I know for some time. And then, of course, a uh, special mention of uh, our veterans here, beginning with uh, Bhushan sir, with whom I was very closely associated when I was in Mumbai. We used to be meeting very often. Uh, he used to be, what do you say, he was like a Fevicol who actually started the business and Senna made a mention of that. He's a person who actually taught the old alumni and that is what I heard about him. And uh, what I remember uh, during my moment tenure with him was together we invited uh, Sri Rakesh Roshan for a get together and he came. And when he came he said this is the only get together of the school I have ever attended and that's because of uh, him. Uh, Bhushan, uh, sir, Pardon me to also say that you recorded with the group. And that name was bestowed on you by Sri uh, Bharge, much better. So, Gabru sir is a role model. 
uh, any of you who gets a chance to meet him to look up to him as a very clever person. Uh, then, uh, Karl Shanasa, thank you for that great introduction in your book. And uh, what you have done, I'm sure, is going to be a way forward for the future generations to come as to know how to buy it. And that's part of my uh, talk also today. Do bear me out for the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Karl Mutkarke, sir, from my regiment, uh, Sikh regiment. Uh, sir, I'm sure you agree that after that fantastic talk by Sachin, uh, Sachin Nambalkar, they will be many motivated to join uh, his regiment, Grenadiers. But I'm grateful to Sachin also for having made a mention of Sikh regiment. <laughs> so, otherwise uh, he would have gone back. I would have left him back here in the school. So, Sachin, thanks for that very elaborate talk. I'm sure you motivated a large number of students. Uh, and of course, respected teachers and the staff, as also the administrative staff. Beloved students, and uh, what I see very different today is the girl cadets who I see for the first time. So, uh, this is something absolutely new. Uh, we, the old time, are not used to seeing girls, but yes, that actually is the way forward. And mind you, I am very certain uh, and convinced that these girls. Uh, when their time comes, there would be some of them joining the Indian Army Navy Air Force in combat roles. You already see that in some, to some extent in the Air Force and the Navy, but surely the Army. And I say that out of experience because as the directors and the Sand Rifles, uh, we have a sanctioned strength of uh, 2,500 Mahila soldiers. And currently we don't have all of them, we have about uh, 1,500 of them. And they are all doing a marvelous job. They are going for patrolling, ambushes, uh, running after militants, every single thing that you would associate a male to do with all of them. So girls, very proud of you. Uh, I am sure you all are going to uh, make the school proud, given that, uh, if I remember correctly, the first batch, which is there in the school, am I right? Is the first batch or second batch? Second batch, okay. Second batch. Uh, so let me... Uh, begin by telling you a little about Assam Rifles. It's, I take this uh, as an owner standing here. Uh, we are a force which is not very well known, yet uh, we have a strength of 67,000 men, all included 67,000, which happens to be 1,000 more than the Indian Navy. <coughs> this some of the naval officers don't like when I tell them that we have 1,000 more than you. So in terms of strength, it's the Army, the Air Force, Assam Rifles and the Navy. Uh, we are, like I said, 187 years old, uh, concentrated and employed in the Northeast only for a very, very long time. But we've also been in both the World Wars, we have been in uh, Sri Lanka, we have also been in Kashmir. And two things that I want to make a mention here is, uh, of uh, JN Kessens, you just out of certain stock. Uh, he did at many places talk of the insurgency. Uh, so, going back uh, to the year 1991, when uh, Assam Rifles had four battalions there in Jammu and Kashmir, one of them, seven Assam Rifles, where I also subsequently went as a company partner, had this great achievement, unsurpassed record, uh, where a JCO, a junior commission officer, led a motley crowd of, uh, a motley soldierly crowd of about uh, 19 men. One JCO, 19 men, over a period of three days, that is 72 hours, they managed to kill 78 militants. Not just 78 militants, they also recorded 118 weapons from these militants, of which more than 100 were from the AK 47 series. So that's a record which is uh, unsurpassed. Uh, besides, when the World War happened, uh, some of you would not know that World War touched the Indian subcontinent, or India as we know it now, in the states of Nagaland and Manipur. That is where the Japanese came advancing from Burma, then Burma, now Burma. And as they entered first Manipur, the first complement of troops that they were confronted with, with were the Assam Rifles. Uh, they infected a lot of casualties on the Japanese and then as the Japanese moved into Nagaland, you would have heard of this uh, Battle of Kohima 
of uh, May June 1944. That was a turning point of the Second World War. Uh, I'm sure it's not in the history here as well. But uh, if you recollect three to four years back, it was there in the media that the Battle of Kohima is also called as the Stalingrad of the East. Because it is at this point where the tide turned against the Allied forces. And that is uh, how the Japs got beaten. They were pushed out from Kohima, from Manipur, and out of India. At that point of time, also the first body of troops in Nagaland that the Japanese confronted were from the Assam Rifles. And they could stall the Japanese for three days, which gave adequate time for the Indian Army to come up to uh, Kohima and beat back the Japanese. So, uh, so much about Assam Rifles. Uh, Mrs. Karan told you that I have been uh, visiting the school very often uh, and I was here in, very recent, in the recent past, just last year. So quite a few of you would uh, be familiar with the talk that I gave there. Uh, what is it that brings us back to the school again and again? Me and whatever the uh, ex-students were sitting in front of me. Is the draw, is the pull, is the bond, is the association, is the connect that we find to the school. Not just uh, the building, the infrastructure, the place, but you as students, while we may not know you individually by name, but each of you is very special to us, each of you is very dear to us. Which is why today's talk I uh, focused just on you people. And uh, in that, what was particularly disturbing to me, I'm sure it would have been to a large number of our uh, ex-students here is the sudden drop in the number of people who are joining uh, the National Defense Academy and the services. Now this I came to know when in my one of my casual talks uh, with the principal. And when he said this, uh, I felt a little listening man and a lot of it got circulated in the WhatsApp groups of various Indian groups that were as to why, why are the students motivated enough. So at the first opportunity I thought let me come here and uh, give you a talk. The larger essence is to give you some kind of a comparison between what exists in the different sources as against outside. Colonel uh, Sinan sir told you that sky is the limit. He's an aeronautical engineer, something which no one would have thought of. Surely he would have never thought of that he's going to become an aeronautical engineer. But uh, I've come in helicopters and uh, flights which were designed there, which I'm sure he had a contribution in uh, that. The point that I make as I go forward is uh, why, okay, you may not be fortunate enough to join the different sources, but there are so many other places where you can do it. So, why selling schools in the first place? Let me start with that. Uh, a lot has been said by when the selling schools started, and what makes us different is that we are the first selling school. Whenever the history of selling schools, is spoken of anywhere in the country. The first thing they say, the first Senate school was in Senate school, Satara, Maharashtra. That is what makes me different. <laughs> and if you have to be different, you have to be head and shoulders above the rest. And there is nothing that is lacking here in our school which will not help you reach there. Uh, let me again go back to uh, Assam Rifles. Now in the Northeast, there are eight states as you know. Uh, of these eight states, not all of them have service schools. Only five of them have. The other three states who do not have, I am in talks with their chief ministers. Two of them have agreed to start service schools in their state. It took a lot of convincing because the chief ministers were fed up with some kind of a wrong information that there is no point starting a service school because the students are not there in the state. They get selected for defense forces and they are off. They are not there in the state. So why should the state pay? I mean, that is the kind of thought that was there, but I'm lucky that we've been able to convince some of the uh, uh, chief ministers who are now making some kind of effort. But importantly, you would have also realized that the Honorable Prime Minister mentioned about a year and a half back of starting 100 selling schools. Now why did he say that? Because he had visited two, two or three Sunday schools and then he realized this is actually the way forward, this is the way to bring up 
people from the lesser privileged society and bring them at a status, at a level where they can make a difference, whether they join forces or not. Today, that Agnivit scheme, where again there is an aim to train a large number of soldiers so that they become good, responsible students, uh, uh, citizens of the society. Now, uh, if I look at this alumni list, which I got it from one of my batchmates, Mr. Tambe, who is again a junior version of uh, uh, Bhushan sir, uh, he maybe passed on the baton to Tambe, who's, who was now instrumental in binding so many different batches. So yesterday he gave me a uh, list of you know people who have done well in other uh, disciplines also in other fields also, and I would like to make a mention of because I spoke of Sri uh, Rakesh Roshan, but you also have Mr. Chapalkar, in the cinema, own, uh, he owns theatre, then you have Rajiv Puri, film producer, uh, there are three other film producers, the MBS here, then we have uh, people who are, are and have been MLAs, and of course a large number of uh, people in the IIA, in IPS as well. <coughs> But uh, I will not take anything away from them. I, I have great respect for the achievement. But the purpose for which the school was started was to get into get you into the national film again. Period. Thereafter, other things happened. People started getting into the forces through short service commission as direct entries through IMA records. And some of course uh, through NCC. And now, of course, the 10 plus 2 technical entry scheme pattern. Similar uh, things exist in the Navy and Air Force also. So, if that is the purpose with which uh, the school was started, I think we are not doing justice if we are not getting into the courses. Uh, next slide. Can you go to the next slide? No, we'll go back over. Okay, never mind that slide is in height. Uh, Sachin, see if you can get these two slides out of height. That is the NDA results and the 12 plus results. There are two slides. Uh, it's my mistake. I told the vice president to put them in height. I wanted to save time. But these are two slides I wanted to show. Uh, if I, the, while the slides still open, if I see the NDA results from the uh, academic year starting 2017 to now 2022. Uh, what I see is, I am just talking about the percentage of students who have joined uh, the NDA. So, 2017, the first batch 8%, 17, 9% again, 2018, 9, 11%, 2020, we have uh, 13 and 11%, 21, 7 and 12%, and 22, uh, 3%, and one batch is to now join in the next uh, session. If you see the average of all the, the average is just about coming to 9 to 10 percent, no, anything between 8 to 10 percent. So, isn't it nothing but injustice if only 8 to 10 percent of us are joining the forces? Given that we have every facility that you can think of there in the school. We used to traditionally be feeding as much as 20 percent, 25 percent. There was a particular batch, three batches senior to me, they even fed 20 or uh, almost 30 percent. 30 percent of the students joined the defense forces. Uh, now, from 30 percent to come down to 3 percent, which is the last one, is, is a sad day. Uh, next slide. I'll take from here. Yeah, this one. Now, if not the NDA, at least you should be doing okay with 12 results. I'm talking of the larger section. Now, again, uh, look at, I'm only flashing people who have scored lesser than 70% in 12. This is an area of concern. You get anything lesser than 70, you're going nowhere. You have to either take a drop and appear again in 12 uh, or think of something else. 
So if you're not joining defense forces, uh, at least this should have been okay. Don't look at those two years which I have circled. These are COVID years. 28.3% and 10.5%. Uh, These are exceptions to the norm. COVID went and we are back to 37%. So we are almost at 40, 50 percent, which means 40 to 50 percent of our children are not even getting 70 percent in their health. We have a future, very difficult. Let me tell you here that it, it is all about getting into the different forces. Once you get into the different forces, it is not as competitive. You only need to focus, and there are very high chances of your doing very well. Okay, uh, just put this in height uh, or just blanks. Just uh, blank the slide. Now, uh, let me go one step further, and this is related to the confusion that is there in the minds of most students. Like I said, I'm pitching this talk at the students' level. I would uh, humbly request the seniors to kindly forgive me for this. Uh, I, the idea was to tell them as to where they need to, you know, post correct. So, while you are here, the confusion always is, where should I lay more emphasis on? Is it study? Is it sports? Is it co-curricular activities? How do I draw a balance? How do I get a good, uh, you know, planning of all this? How do I manage my time? That is the biggest confusion. Am I right? Yes? Okay. So, uh, let me tell you this. Each of you here is different. Your teachers must have told you of this. Every single individual is different from the other. For one person, out of let's say 24 hours, if you are awake, 16 hours, for somebody, 2 hours of study and 4 hours of game that is good. For somebody else, it will be different. That is for each of you to identify where do I need to spend more time. The point here really is, please make use of all these three studies, uh, that is academics, your sports, and the other co curricular activities that are there. Co curricular activities try and make it related to whatever hobbies you have. I remember some of uh, my seniors who used to be you know, photographers. Today I saw again one or two cadets taking photographs. Two or three of them, I recollect, seniors to me have become, gone on to become professional photographers. While they did well and well, one of them I recollect got 85% of those days, but yet he chose to get into photography. Later on, he went to National Geography also. Geography also. So, change your passion while academics is, of course, the fundamental thing that you have to change. But if you have a passion, if you have the attitude, change that also. Uh, so, time management is what is the most important thing here. Just because you are getting into the tent, this is also uh, something that I gathered from my previous visit, that some of the very good sportsmen uh, or sports kids, I can't speak to sportsmen now that the girls are there, the students who are good at sports started neglecting sports when they reached 10th level for the fear that after all they have to study academics. Uh, please let that not happen. If you have, if you are good at something, try and do that and also focus on your study. I want to speak about uh, uh, the new infrastructure I just was told by the principal that there is a new infrastructure coming, new buildings which are coming up. So all of you people who are here, these students, are at a very transformative moment. You are the lucky ones to see the campus as it existed from the time it came up. Of course, uh, when it came up, it wasn't like this. Colonel Sena sir and Bhushan sir will tell me, we were having this barracks. Barracks where you have, I think, now uh, uh, some some are guest rooms, some are with, uh, Mr. Nickel, 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 Nickel uh, Taylor, and the bakery and snack stall. I think that's what. You see those back barracks still exist. So that is what the school was. Then this administrative building came up. Then this Damukar auditorium came up. Uh, so these are the progresses that have made been made over a period of time. But now is something very transformative. The complete school campus is. Uh, going to change and the principal has been driving this change 
he's been uh, very successful in getting the necessary fund. My compliments to you uh, for having uh, fought this battle. And let me tell you, uh, let me tell you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a very tough battle to get anything started and infrastructure. The second Chinese school which happened in uh, Chandrapur, uh, I still remember as a brigadier, me and my senior then, Jen Naborka, again from our school. He was here, I think, for this old boys' day. I we remember the number of trips we made to Mandrale just to get this approval for a second Chinese school. Like I said, we had a problem in the Northeast convincing the CMs. Similarly, here again, they were not convinced why do you want to have another Chinese school? You are not even having the money to fund your Satara school, buy another. But at that time, what helped was our alumni. We had certain people in the Mandrale. We had some uh, two MLAs I still recall from our school. They are the people who could shape the mind and convince the <coughs> powers that were there at that time, 2015, if I recall it, uh, to have another science school. That's how Sanitary Chandrapur has come up. And uh, if some of you uh, children belong that side, during your vacation, just go and have a look at Sanitary School Chandrapur, how it has come up. It's come up very well. I am very sure Sanitary School Satara, the first Sanitary School, when it now comes up again, it will be much better than that. I want to emphasize on the people who shape your minds. To my assessment, there are uh, five, four or five players or five or six players who shape your mind and let's, it begins with your teachers. Uh, I have great respect for the teachers. In the current lot of teachers, when I look at them, I see the teachers who were there during our period. It is the teachers who have the base, have the building blocks. They are the people who actually prime you, tell you, uh, in some way, counsel you as to what's good, what's not good, what is why the what is the reason why you need to join the defense forces, all that. Uh, so please look upon your teachers. Uh, again, when I go back uh, in time, I remember, I recollect a large number of us are very shy to oppose the teachers. We don't want to speak to them. This confusion is there in our mind. Uh, how much focus I should give their academics. And if I'm weak in academics, again, I feel a little uh, scared to ask my doubts. No, don't do that. So it's your teachers who shape your mind the most amongst uh, everyone that's there. And I'm sure the teachers are doing a phenomenal job of that. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the teachers. But there are other people also who shape your mind. And let me uh, say the next people, set of people who influence your mind the most are your parents. Now, for you, your parents aren't here, parents are elsewhere, you are here. You are seeing a different world here. You have a certain mind frame of how or what you will be after a certain period of time. Your parents are elsewhere. They are seeing a different world, they are seeing different schools, they are seeing different students. They try to draw a parallel, draw to draw a connect. I'm sure it's a very tough time for the principal and staff uh, whenever you have these uh, parents meeting here. Their expectations are very different because the exposure is very different. So, uh, while they are always well meaning, I and mean, they can be nobody uh, more well meaning than your parents, but just remember that your parents are looking at a world which is slightly different from yours. You should, as students, particularly I'm talking of children from the 9th standard, 10th standard, 11th standard, 12th standard, you should be able to tell your parents as to why defense force is better. If at all, there are some parents who are telling you that there are ample avenues outside, it's not the case. My, my last slide is the most important one which I want to show you and spend time on that. So after the uh, parents, I think the next lot of people which influences your mind are the ex-students, the alumni. Now this is a very volatile group. Uh, all of them are very opinionated, most of them at least are. Uh, each of them will tell you a different story and that confuses your mind further. There are so many uh, people like me who come here, talk and everyone gives you a different input. But by and large, the theme necessarily is the same, which is that you have to join the defense forces, there is no profession better than the defense forces. But having said that, there are also the select alumni, and I can say this out of experience from my batch. My batch is also uh, called the Jumbo batch. 
1982 to pass out, which uh, Mrs. Kadar mentioned. Jumbo batch because we were double the size of any other batch which came to the school. So we joined in fifth, and next year onward the admission changed to sixth. So fifth and sixth, we became two batches in one, and uh, I joined in fifth. The next batch which came in sixth, they were called as new boys. We still call them new boys after all these years. For us, they spent one year lesser in school, so they're not as experienced as we are. But, but the point I'm trying to make is when I see a double batch, jumbo batch, when I see them interacting, some of them who unfortunately could not get into the different sources, uh, will kind of sell you great stories that there is, uh, there are so many other things to do and you do well. Just don't worry, just, uh, just don't join any. There's nothing left in the different courses. I'm saying this as a first time experience. I'm not just making, you know, uh, imagination. I'm not just shooting the air. This is something that happens. So please stay away, walk away from those uh, alumni. And some of them would belong to your villages, your places where you belong to. And when you go on uh, your Diwali vacation or summer vacation, uh, unfortunately, some of them. May, but this is a very small minority. I say, I will say, not more than five to ten percent. But don't fall into the trap of that of these people. But surely there are the other ninety-five who will tell you the virtues of joining the different forces, and that is what you must listen to. Uh, senior students, uh, the eleven, twelve. Some of you are the role models for the junior class. All of us had role models when we were in junior classes. We looked upon the school captain the boxing captain, the football captain. So, role models in different ways. Now, when a younger student looks up at someone elder as a role model, inadvertently, whatever that person says, you start believing in that. He may be right, he may not be right, he may be as confused as you are. But as a 11th or 12th standard student, he doesn't want to show his confused. He's supposed to be elite. Uh, I hope the 11th, 12th students are not taking offense to what I'm saying. This is a cycle which keeps happening. So don't worry, we have gone through the same phase. Uh, but you, 11, 12 children, and also 10 to some extent, have a great uh, role to play in influencing juniors. So I would call upon the seniors also to play a fundamentally important role to motivate the younger children to join the defense forces, irrespective of whether you are able to join or not. Then, of course, we have. Uh, People from outside, your other civilian friends, media, a lot of it is written in the media, books, all these also influence your mind. But the bottom line, if I have to put it in one word or encapsulate it, uh, I will tell you that just draw the good points uh, from all of them that they tell you about joining different sources and leave it at that. Now, what worries or aids your mind is also. Again, 11, 12, and 10. When you reach the senior classes, where is it that you need to focus more? Is it uh, your UPSC or is it 12? And that is where I would want or I would request the teachers to step in because this is a confusion uh, which has been going on from the time, uh, I mean, time immemorial. 1978 is the first time when we had a batch passing out from the 12. Earlier it was easy 11 and you left. But now, it is 12 and it kind of clashes with your NDA, particularly the first chance. Your first chance of NDA is the most important. I will repeat this again. First chance of NDA is the most important chance ever. Don't leave it for your second, third. How much time to spend on your board? How much time to spend on your EPC? That, I won't be able to legislate the time. Surely the teacher, the principal, the vice principal are in a better position to do. So this heavy load of study that comes, particularly in the 11th grade, is something that you need to surpass, find a way out. Uh, many times, while you are in this uh, state of mind, you are also in what uh, in management jargon we call success, uh, hope of success or fear of failure. Many of you get into that fear of failure, if I am not, then what? Why don't you think the other way? Tell yourself that you are capable. Each one of you is capable. Narasimha uh, sir is here. I am here. Uh, Sina is here. Sina sir, I don't know much about you. We are meeting for the first time. But surely Narasimha sir and me, we were never for a first in academics. 
You were, sir? Five page is five subjects in seven days. Yeah. Sir, page is five subjects. Can see where he is. He is in the sky. So don't get demotivated. Your academic performance is no benchmark on how you will do in future. I repeat this. Uh, all first four years, the old one will tell you that all those who came first, second, third, fourth, fifth in twelve are not today at first, second, third, fourth, fifth levels in terms of accomplishments, in terms of achievements. There are many other factors which come in. Your man-to-man -man relationship, your emotional quotient, how do you handle relations, all this matters. Because Sachin told you, office twice each, uh, the virtue. Then uh, he was wounded, he said, I'm not going to survive. You take somebody else who's even wounded more. Now that is the kind of virtue which will never come out in Sank school or for that matter any school. But that is a virtue which will connect you to your soldiers. Today he remembers uh, you know, his twice after so many years, it's 23, 24 years. Why? Because there is a certain connect that the twice he was able to establish and that will be there in most of you. And this again I say out of my long years of experience that children or ex-students from our schools are looked upon by many people, I mean at least the ones in the different forces, as people who have a great uh, human skills. We are great human skills people. Uh, we are known for our simplicity, we are known for uh, our intellect, and more importantly, we are known for our humility. In NDA or uh, any batch, you meet any uh, Senate School Satara person and take an opinion about him from anybody else who is not from Sanis This line will always be there. He is a very humble man. He is a very humble, he is a very sincere man. And as Sachin had said, Tarun Sachin had said, that is because of the base that we got here, what we learned here. It is a school. Generations have changed, but our virtues have not changed. I am sure this is what will carry you forward. Uh, so, what is it that we need to do? I told you of problems. So, what is it that uh, you as students need to do? To begin with, have this attitude of gratitude. All of you must remember the sacrifices that your parents have made to send you here. I gather there are a large number of you who are from states outside Maharashtra also, many from Bihar and UP. So, just uh, tell yourself every single day what your parents have sacrificed to get you here. They have huge expectations from you. Don't be a let down. Every single day that you spend here in the school, uh, if you start the day developing them, I'm sure you'll do nothing but the good. I spoke some time back about uh, each person being different. Each of you has to recognize what are your strengths. And that is what I'll be speaking to the teachers hereafter also. Uh, it is of identifying strength of every person, every student, and nobody better to judge strength than yourself. What happens wrong is, while you know your strength, but you don't want to speak about it, don't speak about it, but build on that. I'm sure that will take you forward. Uh, my last point on this is, uh, don't be shy of taking advice from your teachers, from your parents, from your alumni, from anybody else. Don't be introverted on this issue at least if you are confused as to what, what is it that you should be doing in case you feel you are not doing well. Uh, can I have that last slide? A 10 factor comparison? No. Yeah, this is a, a slide where I in some way finish all that I have been saying. Uh, now, I will touch upon each of these one by one. I have made three columns. The first, I have showed you an aspect that we should consider. In the second, what is it in the different forces and what is it in the others? Association, blood brothers, bonding, friends. There is nothing better than what you get. Uh, one, firstly, your batchmates. That is, of course, the first level. The next level 
is within defense forces. This is where your force mates, people who are with you in the academy, your regiment, your battalion, your arm, your service. There is nothing better than that. And uh, not just I, but you'll be telling with this. We speak about this after years of history. There is absolutely no comparison in the third column. There is no comparison between defense forces and the others on this. The second is, of course, uh, your health, which should be of great concern for all of us. We say your health is well. Uh, you have to think long term. At your age, everyone's health is the same. But as you go forward, as responsibilities come by, as uh, you have your family, the amount of time that you'll get to spend towards looking after your own health will only be declining. And in this, uh, different services just stands out. It ensures that you have your annual medical, periodic medical check. So you are forced to be in a state of fitness. Uh, so when that becomes a habit, even when you retire, you will always be conscious of your health and not just your health, but you will also look out at the health of your family because you are looking after yourself. The third is remuneration, salary. Now, uh, I have not written anything here because there will be many people who will tell you that you will earn a lot outside. But let me tell you in terms of uh, pay, particularly after the last two pay commissions, the amount of money that uh, a defense officer has now is a lot more than what uh, it used to be in earlier times. And I would like to uh, tell you an anecdote here. When I was a second lieutenant, I was in somewhere in Jammu. The first leave that I was going to, my CEO asked me, where do you belong to? Do you belong to Pune? I said, yes, I belong to Pune. He said, okay, uh, take this. I'm putting up a claim and I want to buy a second hand car. So please get this claim of mine passed because this claim wasn't getting passed. So I went, I threw my ankles, I knew few people in the CDA. I could manage to get the uh, commanding officer's loan sanction. And how much was that? That was 20,000 rupees. 20,000, with that he bought a second hand car and there was a huge celebration in the unit. There were, there were garlands put around the car, there was puja done, and there was a parakhan in the unit because CEO could buy a car. A CEO could not think beyond a Lambertus scooter. If I'm, uh, if the old timers will agree, a Lambertus scooter was you took a tree. And second hand car, there was nobody in the complete uh, brigade or division or any CEO having. But see how times have changed. Uh, times have changed everywhere. Else. The complete section of uh, society is being well, but along with that, it's not just your pay, it is also the perks that come with it. The number of facilities that you have the painting facilities, the hospital facilities, uh, the amenities that are available to your children, swimming pool, basketball pool, tennis pool, this, that and the other, no other profession will give you, no matter which industry you, you join in forces, you join the top uh, medical college, the, the perks that you get in different sources, no gates will be able to give you. On that, be very, very sure. Uh, but most importantly is respect. Again, values of the society are changing. Today, nobody is very bothered about what respect is. But when that respect starts coming to you, that is when you realize, oh yes, I as a defense force. Now you heard the second story. There are thousands and thousands of stories like this. This is what gives you respect. For years on, every single year when a survey is done by India today, which is the profession that is respected most? Which is it? You tell me. Yes, Indian Army, I don't, I'm not restricted to Indian Army, it is the Defense Forces. That is the most respected, that is the most uh, looked up profession. And why is that? It's not because of pay, but it is that the fact that we have never let down the country. We have a country in the neighborhood uh, where the Army runs the country. You would have heard of, uh, read in the media of the chief changing. Uh, Pakistan chief, a new person coming. It's a totally different society there. Today, you have in Pakistan, again, you would have read in the media, something unheard of. People in the Pakistani media, it's coming that uh, when General Bhagat, chief was retiring a couple of days' time, when he became chief, he was just a millionaire. Today, he's a billionaire, his 
daughter in law is a billionaire, so is his son. They are looked down upon. They have branched off from the same organization. We were one army at one point of time. But see how these two armies have drifted apart. We have remained where we were. All the respect, uh, all the fan following, if I can say it, uh, in words that are familiar to you. And there you have uh, Pakistan army, which is looked down not just by us, but their own society. Uh, look at stability. Now, again, I'll put question marks here. What is it that you're looking at stability? Are you looking at being at one place and serving there all your life? Yes, this was the case at one point of time. If you did not join the defense forces, if you're in, you went outside, uh, you remained at one place. Today, that story doesn't hold to any more. Whether you are an engineering graduate, an MBA graduate, a doctor, you will move places. You will never be at one place. And that is the demand of the profession, uh, of the world today. And even, I go a step further, some of you would have uh, read this in various books. Today you can't just achieve uh, one degree, let's say medical degree or engineering degree, and think that this is what will carry you through for the rest of your life. It won't. You have to constantly be uh, innovate. You have to constantly reinvent yourself. You have to have additional degrees coming. Otherwise you are going nowhere because the world is changing so fast. You have to keep pace with the technology changes that are happening. Just getting your degree and thinking that okay till the next 40 years it can be thrown no, it won't. So stability will not it is actually comparable. Probably I'll say uh, you are stable more in the defense forces because when you go to areas that are far flung, uh, while you may not be with your family, but your family will be remaining in a sentiment. In the neighborhood, they will have only defense people around. So, there, while you may not be there, there is a stability for them. They will continue to enjoy the perks which they would have enjoyed if you were there. Uh, next point is again related to that family time. <coughs> How much uh, family time you get to spend? Uh, ask any of the uh, alumni who are not in the defense forces. There was a game of time when they could. Tell you from uh, that they get to spend more time with their family. That's not the case anymore. They are spending longer hours, just working in the offices, 14, 16, 18 hours. I'm sure uh, Kalsina sir will agree that it's not just here in India. Maybe Western countries also it's the same. This is a life, a different life, which will uh, give you some kind of a standard format, a certain routine which you can follow. You cannot follow any kind of a routine outside. Uh, first, I already spoke of, I already mentioned children upbringing and exposure. The kind of exposure that uh, all of your children now could go on, you will have children. So, would you not want your children to have a great exposure of uh, going around the country, meeting different kinds of people? This is an experience which you will not have. I look back at my batch, we talk two guys from my batch, uh, one is a doctor, one is uh, an IIT Mumbai guy who went and did his master's uh, in the US. Today they both are at one place, while they have achieved a lot in their life, but uh, their children are by and large at the same place. They have not really uh, seen or had the kind of exposure with somebody else who joined the services. Well, uh, you all are a witness that uh, anyone, some of you who did not do so well in 10th, uh, surprisingly they joined India and see how life changes for them. Uh, all round development, also I uh, later mentioned, but most importantly, if you have to sum up everything, where is it that you will be happier? I have uh, absolutely no doubts in my mind to tell you, you will be happier here in the different forces. That is the uh, theme that I want to bring out. Uh, when I say it, I wanted to make a comparison. Why I made this slide I made with a purpose? Because there is this confusion. And that confusion comes primarily out of too many books coming out. I told you of people who keep your mind, parents, ex-students, alumni. Just forget all this. I will leave this slide for the principal and at the question if this can be given to the students. So that, if at all there is any doubt in your mind, 
This is something we I am not saying that this is all encompassing. I am sure my seniors who are here will have more to tell you on this. But this is just what I feel uh, needs to be remembered. So, uh, with that, I come to end it. I just wish you all the very best and thank you once again. But uh, surely I don't want to leave like uh, Sachin Abhankar with no questions asked. I, I can understand nobody asks you questions because you are so overall. Uh, you know, I thought by his presentation, but uh, like Mrs. Sarah told you, I have come from far. Therefore, as a matter of reciprocity, uh, I would look forward to some questions for you. Anything, any doubts, anything at all? Yeah, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much and uh, firstly I'll say that your purpose or the focus was fantastic. It did say that the focus of the Senate school is military. Am I correct? Absolutely. And what has really hurt me today, you might not like it, is the principle at all. I don't think we ever failed finally in exams. No. I saw the UPSC results. The UPSC results during our time, so you all agree. There is no question of failing, out of question. It was SSB, it was a problem. Never answer. The second part which I will say, I also failed. Look at volume 1, I got my mark sheet of 7. Is that volume 1? I had 19 marks because I had a double promotion, I came from Royalist. I had 19 marks in writing algebra geometry. Right? First exam, quarterly exam. After dinner, the teachers used to call me. And by the final exam, the report card I got, I had 85. Is it possible? So my real message I am giving, one can always have reasons for a failure, but always find ways to get a success. So, general, you are very right. We really need to look into the academic side also. There is no question of failing. Chinese school Sadarians never failed in academics. Am I right, sir? If possible. So it's time to pay attention. So that's my very rightly said. And rightly, I've also been in the military. And he has said, I can say confidently, I've seen both civil and military right now worldwide. I worked with US Army, I worked with every armies of the world. I was also a colonel in the Australian Army. I can tell you, and I've seen the civil arena as an aerospace engineer. If today the general asked me, I'll stand by the different forces. What the difference gave me today, the civil arena has given me a position and fame in the world. But what different forces made me today, that civil arena could have never given me. So I'm telling you all, please join. I'm willing to come back as a world renowned person. I am willing to come back, but give me the good news that today we all are passing. Is it clear? I also joined IIT. I did my aerospace from IIT to Bishop. First exam, I had 30 RO marks, zero. By the time I graduated in aerospace engineering, I talked to IIT. So I am unwilling, I don't believe it. Being an Indian, I was the first one who worked with NASA, everything, I'm sorry, I'm taking a minute more. Is it fine, Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, it fine? Yeah, you see, as an Indian, India has its own world issue because of our rule, foreign rule. We were always looked down upon. When I started facing the world stage, I was still looked upon down as an Indian in the aerospace industry worldwide. I can't change my color. I can't change myself. Every time I have to come to talk on the world stage, the Americans or the British or these buggers, sorry using the word, used to look at me and say you are an Indian. So one of the times when I was addressing like this, the British or the Englishman said, excuse me Indian, you speak very fast English. Do you know what my reply was on the world stage? Sorry gentlemen, your understanding is slow. <laughs> Be present, and the general officer very rightly said, Keep your focus, 
Other was my experience with the Americans as I started rising in the world. He tells me the moment I finish, you Indians speak very good English. You can imagine telling me and me are the only Indian over there. The American tells me, you Indians speak very good English. Good English. I say, sorry my friend American, we Indians speak correct English. <laughs> Finally, I will say my students and I will add on to Kendall Nair, hats off to your presentation, sir. I am unbelievable what you have focused on and I will give it to you all. And remember, like I said, if I can be from this school as a failure in classes, look at my mark sheet, I have shown it in the, I have hidden it. If I can be the world's highest awarder for aeronautics ever, why can't you all be in any field, you can do it. And how I am in India today, I am a paratrooper which is now I am a skydiver, first skydiving course from Army. Every two years I go to Agra, join my reunion, I am a 70 year old person, I just turn my command skydiver and come back. If I can be physically fit to what he said, you can always do it, you can do it academics. So, thanks a lot, you are the most impressed with this speech. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Janata. That was uh, very good for I think you are more convinced with your speaking <laughs> than mine. Uh, but we have a large number of students. I want to warn you if you don't ask questions, they start asking questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I see a hand. Very good question. Thanks. So what's your name? Kanesh Shreya Shinde. Shreya Are you also some appointment? Yes, sir. House captain? No, sir. Captain. Vice school captain? Discipline captain. Discipline oh, captain. Sorry, my fault. So, a very good question. Uh, if I go back in time when I was sitting there like you, uh, nobody spoke of this. I mean, there were very few ex who came in the first place. Now you have a problem of plenty. You just had last week you had a note voice meet where so many people would have spoken. But this never got spoken. But yes, your point is very valid. How do you identify what you just saying? And take it that forward, how do you start focusing there? Is that a question? Yeah. Now, uh, what you are good at, you will know yourself. Your peers will tell you, your teachers will tell you. Right? Uh, we had a biology teacher of the name uh, Mr. Jayadasan. Now he settled in Madurai. Uh, Mr. Karu told you that I have played in the school team for the last 3 years, 10, 11, 12. So, uh, though he was a biology teacher, he was also a uh, football coach. So, Harge sir used to be too busy managing so many sports, so there were uh, teachers given responsibility of particular sports. So, this Mr. Devdasan, I still remember our teacher telling me, uh, don't worry if you don't get through to NDA. You will, I will get you a job in Tata as a, as a sports coach. So I said, sir, what are you talking? I am thinking only of poison and don't worry. Uh, not everyone is lucky to get into India and he, he was probably sent. Uh, that is when it, I was still then concentrating on the AJ entrance which was coming. Second chance, first chance I had failed. Uh, so second chance was coming and that is, I was still in the level. Uh, towards the end. So uh, that is when I went to him. Uh, he also used to be a, one of our you have duty teachers coming. I said, I want to spend some time with you. And I asked him, sir, what is the future? What is the certainty guarantee of you are giving me a job in Tata if I don't make it to NDA? So he said, no, that I just said off the cuff. Uh, NDA should still remain your primary focus. But once you go past all your four chances, one year out of the school, then you can always fall back on me. We will find something. So that was one word of this which gave me some confidence. Okay, well, Something I mean, there is an alternate option also. All of us have to think of an alternate option uh, without losing sight of the primary one. So thereafter, we have to build on that. So when we came to 12, uh, again, like I said, we witnessed this. Some of our classmates didn't want to then play the football team or whatever sports team. They wanted to pass on the baby to the level, saying, no, 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 we'll start studying for a play. And uh, they were not as bright as uh, 
that we in 10th and 11th were taken to the NDA and my first visit to the NDA, I had no doubts that this is the place I am going to come. And as luck would have it, I was the first person from my class. Ah, I was in 10th uh, and I was having a problem for age. So the principal told, you appear for uh, NDA exam in between only. I mean, the first three or four months of 10th. If you get through, you are 10 pass and you can go to the NDA. So that was also a bait which here the principal had given. What I am trying to bring out is that there are certain occasions in life where things will you know, it just strike you that this is what I am made for. And my visit to the NDA was what motivated me. And as uh, luck would have it, I was the first chap from my class to join the NDA when I was just 10 plus 2 months, 10, I just wanted to 10 and 2 months. And that was it. <laughs> so that's how, that is what my experience is. And I'm sure that all of you will have such experiences. All of you will be confronted with your parents' dreams. All of you will have your own dreams. But let me tell you, you have to make the final decision. I would have been a pilot in the British Airways. I was a game captain. But today, 35 years of service in the army, and I am here today. Again, I am over 70. So, I have no regrets. And I stand by this flight. A, absolutely well brought out by General Nair. And uh, you now have to take the call along with the support that you get from the principal and teachers. That is all from my side. Thank you. You have two military perspectives. We have something from Mumbai, the happy city. Friends, principal, General Nair, very grateful to be among all of you and giving me an opportunity to speak to the children. Of course, I am not from the armed forces. I had my own way of building my career in business and I was in business for the last 50 years and now I am a retired but not a tired sending. Okay. Incidentally, what happened was I did my SS. I was the weakest in SS. We let me tell you. All my friends will vouch for if I could happily climb up a rope. So, sorry? You can see that. You can see that. Yes. You are now seeing me in a reduced condition. It was much more. So, <laughs> so. But I was very lucky to get through SSB in medical. Unfortunately, I could not join. And that was a big setback. Let me tell you, sir, my... Apart from education, the best experience which I had was during the training of the SSB time. When uh, Colonel Puri used to you know, take our group discussions, that was the best time I enjoyed. And that really took me even through the SSB time because we were always in the front. We were taught so well that we could be any candidate coming for it. You know, in group discussions we were in the front. And I, I want to emphasize upon the principle of the school through you, sir, that group discussion is the only way out to one of the only way out to develop a child's career. When he starts from the standard fifth, sixth, he starts speaking in English, he starts to understand how to counter, how to understand what the topic is, and how to develop himself. That is the time he will build that spirit that next time I will do a good discussion, I will see that I do better. And that is what took me front. And that is why I believe this association, blood, brothers, friends, lasting and lifelong. This motivated me. And when I finished my MBA, 
My father told me now the business is in your hands. How you want to go about? <laughs> and through our clinics, I got an opportunity to get into the Indian Navy to serve the Indian Navy from the outside, which was my dream that I wanted to serve the armed forces from outside. It was my dream. And finally, through my group discussion, my fighting spirit, my motivation, I went inside and I got the first contract for developing indigenous Russian equipment in India from the Indian Navy. Let me tell you, I never took a single penny from the government for two years till I completed my project. And thereafter, I made my way. I was given all the contracts and I am very thankful to the Indian Navy who made me to, you know, feel that I am part of the services. And then again I came back to, in 1980, when Kazan Puri invited me to his house, saying that, along with Garke sir, Sir Gabru, Mujhe Association Banami. And my sole motto is that my children, when armed forces are in the civil life, mein hai, they should all come on the same platform and they should help each other. Just, just, just to help them, they will get help. Milegi. And I want you to start this with Garke sir. Sir, with your blessings and with the cooperation of all my friends, we started in 1980 the hunt. Or journey Shuruki, and today we are on the 42nd year of the association. Again, association blood brothers bonding friends, lasting lifelong. Aapka pehla point, aaj bhi kaim hai, aur ye kaim rahega, and we will always be together. That is the main motive. And now we came, we had this, we did this Founders Day over here, and we Played the bus stop, Karan Puri, Gakke sir, Gakke. Bache ko ye zarur malum rahe ke these were our founders. And unke saath ye association chuli hai, unke blessings se chuli hai. And I am blessed to have such lovely friends from the first weekend who gave me so much cooperation to building up this association and where we are, how we started and how we are. Again, Karan Sina, Karan Mutkate, मुझे फोन करके कौन कौन पे बोलते हैं यार एक किताब लिखनी है दैट वाज कोविड टाइम हमको ये था कि एक साल तो हमने कांग्रेस ने कर लिया अब अभी क्या करें तो तब ये किताब लिखने का हमारे मन में आया कि लेट अस स्टार्ट दिस बुक एंड लेट मी सेंड यू सर 3 साल हो गए हम आपस में मिले थे लेकिन दो वॉल्यूम बाहर निकल गए सो सो स्पिरिट व्हाट यू गेट इज from that group discussion. I again, my inner thing is that my inner thing is that the group discussion will motivate every child to motivate them, and in the last fifth year, his competitiveness will improve. And he will learn more English, he will learn more Hindi, he will learn, you know, in any language. But he will know what the subject is, how to discuss, how to interact, and qualities of accepting somebody else's mood, points. And giving in yourself, submission and acceptance is the best way of leading the life. So thank you very much, sir. I'm very grateful to be among all of you, and especially you remembering me from our good old days. I'm extremely grateful, sir. Thank you very much, principal, sir. Thank you all of you, and thank you, students. God bless you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> sir, I think nobody could have put it. Uh, more explicitly than you have. You really touched a thought. Uh, it's made a difference. See, see that from the difference it's made to the students. From the, not only from the round of applause, but more importantly, some of them who are sleeping have woken up and have opened up the I just want to I just clarify one last point about the slide. I was looking at the slide. These question marks are not confusion in my mind or our mind. It is your mind. When I say this question mark, you are confused. Which is better? Is it better here? Or is it better there? Just take it that in all virtues, the second column far outweighs the third. I repeat, the second column far outweighs the third column. There is no comparison. And you will see this as you uh, 
move further ahead in life. And uh, Girl Gana sir, once again, gratitude for that book, not only for the book, but the manner in which you brought it out. Uh, sir, great effort. Sir, good afternoon, sir. I did not introduce myself. So because uh, one and, uh, two days before I just gave one and a half hours of quotation speech to everybody. Uh, let me tell you children, I am the uh, correct example who has seen the both lives. I was in defense for 22 years, I served in Indian Army, Indian Navy, Indian Coast Guard. And now I am into an entrepreneurship. So I have, uh, now I have two results. So I have seen the both sides of life now. And I can vouch on that. The life in defense is one of the best which I had in the last 22 years. The first and foremost reason was that that jobs Satisfaction was amazing. You go anywhere. Now I am to, I am only the two resort, but that satisfaction which I have got in the army or in navy or in the coast guard was nothing, nothing. And for the second thing is that the health. When I was army, I had to run 43 kilometers. I stayed for 11,000 kilometer, uh, kilometers in deep sea. Now my health is deteriorating after being in a civil. Then family life. My wife still grieves that first two shoulder army. Now, the family life is totally lost because they and I have been out totally. So, I would like to say, defense life is one of the best life and really, uh, I will tell you, job satisfaction and job security. Job security is very, very important nowadays because there you have to see a lot of people in the uh, US have been laid off by a lot of uh, companies because this uh, uh, recession. But in defense, what will happen? Defense will take care of you. As uh, Colonel Nimbanga told you, even though disabled, still the defense is taken, taking care of uh, the people in the paraplegic center, uh, those who are doing the war. So job security and job satisfaction in defense is uncomparable to any of the services you go outside. Second thing, uh, uh, every day is a happening day in the army, yeah, in, in the defense. Every day is a different, it's different. It's not like that now what happens, I pick up my bag, go to the resort, come back, sit, sleep, go. But in defense, every day was different. We, uh, different. we used to go at the, in exercise, we used to go for different adventures, being in adventure, uh, every day was different. So I would like to say that there's nothing, nothing better than that joining the defense. Okay, the other side, you see the greener side, but let me tell you, now see the last two years I've been fighting, and there is a lot of competition outside, a lot of politics outside, and a lot of putting down is outside. So in defense, the best thing is that with little focus, you can do better. You can do better than anybody. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Uh, so, sir, I think you summed it all because you had an experience of all. Uh, Ujur, if I can take just one more minute for this, uh, with your permission. Uh, she did my brief. I was supposed to have finished uh, 15 minutes ago. I'll come to you. There's a small child who wants a question. I just uh, one point I had uh, what Gabu sir brought up. I totally agree to what you said, sir. And this is out of experience. He said this point about group discussion. If you recollect, uh, Madam Karun told you that I was director in recruitment a year and a half ago. So all these SSPs. I would use it because they were under me. I remember two SSBs, now I don't remember the students, but both of them have passed out because they were in uh, 12th last year. I don't recall it any, but one student of ours I met in Bangalore, the other student again from our school I met in Kaputala. Uh, and the places where they, both of them could unfortunately never exactly this uh, group discussion and that individual talk which you have to give. <coughs> and uh, in my, I was directed in recruiting only for six months. In my six months, these are the only students I came across from a school. And unfortunately, both of them failed in these two subjects. And thank you for bringing this out. Here. I would uh, request the school authorities in some way to institutionalize this uh, issue where the children right from the seventh and eighth standard are encouraged and not wait for nine, ten, eleven. By which time. Uh, percentages of most of them are in some way developed already. In some way, of course, all your dramatics, elocutions, debates help. But how many of us get a chance? Not all of us get a chance. Very few of us get. And the other students who don't get a chance uh, try and spend about 5 to 10 minutes, let's say once in a week, and talk about the children of 6th and 8th standard. On your Sundays, when you're free, stand in front of the mirror, all of your mirrors in your dormitory, and speak on any subject. Any, 
or what you expect from the lunch, <coughs> what you expect uh, from the sports, anything at all. Speak for a minute. Talk for one minute. That's what I'd like to think. Uh, yeah, I just uh, sometimes at the back row, back row asking questions which would never deny. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. I cadet Sanati Tavi. Sir, my Miss class, Miss class are you? Six days. The my question is to find the Kargil Hill. Kargil Hill is known as Kargil. Why is Kargil? Why is Kargil Hill known as Kargil? Sorry, Tiger Hill. Why is Tiger Hill known as Tiger Hill? Okay, that is just a name given by us. We have called it Tiger Hill. The Pakistanis would have called it something else. Yeah, Anything in particular, Sajid? Nothing. It was just because it is a very dominating feature. It has vision to all these 360 degrees, so that's why it was for them, because it was impregnable. He told us that from there you could see everything on that highway in H1A. So it's very dominating, stands out, so it's like a tiger. So these are names which we get. On the border you find all names, name something, the enemy will be named something else. Jekal Hill. Pakistan is called Jekal Hill. Jekal Hill? Yeah, Pakistan. Okay. They can't even call it Jekal Hill. Either. Yeah, one more question. Class 7, are you? Sir, 8. 8. How do you advise us to rise up in ranks in the different forces? Oh that's a very really difficult question. Honestly, honestly. See, what happens is, at every stage, there is some motivation to become something. To be very honest, this is an admission I have not made. My uh, focus, or why I was determined to get into NDA, was to, uh, you know, Avoid appearing for 12th exam because I was quite weak in calculus. I knew I would fail. So, my motivation to get into NDA was to bypass the 12th. Right? And if you are honest, this is a confusion I'm making for the first time. But as you, so one aim achieved, thereafter you become an officer, you become a second lieutenant. You now, while you are in the academy, you want to pass out. That is the next stage. So, at every stage, just keep looking at the next step only. Don't start looking at your aim now should be to firstly uh, reach level without failing at any point of time, making use of all the facilities here and then get to it. So focus on one step at one time and thereafter as you progress, you keep changing to the next focus. You get commission, okay. Next you want to pass certain promotion exams, do well on courses, such activities. So this the ecosystem will tell you what it means. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Ken Prashant. Uh, when you go for vacations, our parents say that ideas have got 12 lakh package, 14 lakh package, something like that. So Please take this slide. Please take this slide, all of you. And if some parent says anything, just flash this in front of them and explain to them what it's true. <laughs> it is not compatible. In fact, I'll, I'll change the slide. All these question marks I'll remove and I'll fill the reality. Why I kept this question mark is I wanted it to come from. Some of our veterans were here for you to understand. They also say that uh, there is uh, like uh, some danger in our joining our forces. So, uh, how to deal with that? How to convince them? Where is there no danger to tell so, I also said that, uh, also said that, that uh, it is standard and something for you that you, will, you may die now. So it will be better if you serve country and die. So some of the parents also not like uh, uh, why to serve country rather than we can go outside and. Uh, Outside also. Outside into what? You have a sir here, he is very high in Australian hierarchy. He tells you, sir, can you just clarify? Why not go out and why not be here? I would want uh, a first hand experience. Since you are this question, why not? Why outside? Why not outside? What would be better position than you? Some of us, people say that if you want to really serve country, you can do it from outside also and earn money also. No, no, no. Just a minute. I'll make it very clear. There are thousands of ways to serve a nation. Yeah? There are thousands of ways to serve a nation, but you have to decide in which profession you want to serve. Yeah? Whether you want to serve the nation through the military, you have to serve. Whether you want to serve the, through the military, 
whether you want to serve to the civil, whether you want to serve to the business, whether you want to be political master to the country, so you have to decide. But the question what surprises me, being in Saint school, there should be no doubt. Am I correct? Absolutely, that's where we How can you about. think of that while being a cadet of Saint school? <laughs> that's very clear. You, your mind has to be focused the moment you join Saint school. It depends. That decides whether you make the grade or not. It's totally secondary. And danger? Today, ask what I told my driver. You are driving me from Pune. I have been in the special forces. I still do skydiving. My army colleagues will tell me. Guess what? I am more scared on Indian roads. <laughs> I have never feared in my life. I fear now going back to Pune by that time. <laughs> Did I answer your question? Don't fear that it can come anytime. Have I answered this question? Absolutely. Absolutely not. And today, before you go to sleep, think nothing but defense and tell your parents, right? I joined Chinese school to join the defense. Okay. Okay. okay, I think. Uh, with that, uh, we should be ending. Uh, otherwise, principal will not invite me here after. <laughs> <laughs> so, once again, uh, my gratitude to all of you. You have a question, we'll be in the mess. Okay? Uh, but not at the cost of lunch. You'll sit next to me and have that. What's your name? Sir, can you touch it Okay. Raghu, enjoy your evening. So, you sit next to me, we'll be top. I would want to sit to the uh, get and answer the unanswered questions. Right. Some, some of them will be comfortable to do uh, Once again, my uh, gratitude to firstly all the elders over here for having taken time and fortunate to meet some of you, the others I haven't met. But please respect for because you are the people who uh, laid the foundation. We just built up on that and this future generation will take that forward. Uh, you have traveled long distances, risk your lives on the Pune Mumbai road. And you are still going to risk when you get back. Uh, so, once again, grateful to you. And special that is the principal, uh, all the uh, uniformed officers here in the back, the faculty, the teachers, and of course the students for bearing around for this uh, long duration. We have still half a day left. There is lunch. There is also uh, some basketball that we could have in the evening. So, look forward to seeing you all in the uh, evening also there. Thank you once I just take this opportunity to also uh, announce a trophy which Assam Rifles is going to institute here after. Uh, and this trophy will be for the cadet who joins NDA and who is highest in the merit from our school. So this will start from this. So uh, what happens is, I am told the uh, last student was 22nd in the order of merit. Sometimes it will be 22nd, sometimes it will be 22nd. Doesn't really matter. These are just merits, surely not indicative of where you will go ahead. So, while uh, my deep respect, uh, deep respect and uh, applause for this cadet, uh, cadet Chaitanya, I am told, is the cadet who's come 22nd. Uh, he's not here. But those of you who are in touch with him, please tell him this institute, uh, this uh, trophy gets instituted, and the first name that will be inscribed on the trophy is his. Uh, unfortunately, the trophy is not here. We are yet to design it. But uh, before the NDA session starts in January, I will uh, request the principal to make sure that the credit comes here and he joins NDA with a hype that I am the uh, best. Uh, coming as I am from Sadi School Sabha. Thank you. Uh, may I request Lt. General P. C. Nair, Ati Vesi Seva Medal, Youth Seva Medal, PhD, Director General Assam Rifles, to present a small token of appreciation to the school in form of Memento of Assam Rifles, which is called as Dhai Murti, which signifies the human connect of Assam Rifles with the population of Northeast. 
which was given by the Tea Planters Association of India and the Burmese government as part of the help that Assam Rifles rendered to the fleeing refugees in the World War II. So may I request the principal group captain Kujwal Kormade to accept the uh, moment of peace. is a small uh, photograph showing the connect between Assam Rifle Science and Sainis School Satara, the school building of Sainis School Satara and the headquarter building of Assam Rifles with the officers presently posted with Assam Rifles. This Dhai Murti, which was just presented, it's called Dhai Murti because uh, there is a soldier, there is a lady, and there is a child sitting on the uh, shoulders of the soldier. Sachin just told you of uh, World War II, I tell you the exact details of this. It was April 1944 when the Japanese were advancing through Burma. There were a large number of refugees were coming in. Burmese had, uh, the Japanese, advancing Japanese army had shot the husband of this lady. And this lady was in the wilderness with this child, uh, not knowing what to do. So this assigned rifle soldier, uh, not only took the soldier on his shoulder, but walked through the jungles of the northeast for uh, 10 days and brought her to safety. Uh, she brought her to safety to India. And as an act of recognition by the Indian diaspora, which was there in Burma, they gave this uh, a small trophy of it, showing the assigned rifle soldier lady and the wife and, and the small child so that is why it's called hierarchy but of course on the lighter side people say when a fellow goes to Assam Rifle he goes single when he comes back he comes back like this <laughs> we are coming <laughs> no age is advanced age <laughs> thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen thank you Thank you very much, sir, for sharing your word of wisdom, for instituting trophy, and kind gesture by felicitating thing by our principal, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, after hearing the motivational talks, it's time now to pose a vote of thanks. On behalf of Sensible Fraternity, I express deep sense of gratitude to the chief guest of today's occasion, Lieutenant General Pradeep Nayar, ABSM, USM, PhD. Director General Assam Rifles for gracing the occasion. Sir, we are truly encouraged by your valuable presence and certainly cadets are benefited by your valuable and inspiring words. I express my sincere thanks to special veteran guests, Colonel Sina, Mr. Malhotra, and um, Colonel Muskate. I also extend alumni for their benign presence. I express my special thanks to our Revered Principal Group Captain Ujwal Gurmade for his valuable guidance, moral support, and for also providing stimulating environment for this grand occasion. I would like to thank Administrative Officer Lieutenant Colonel Pramod Patil and Vice Principal Lieutenant Colonel Manisha Dabas for their constructive support. I am also thankful to our teaching staff and non teaching staff for their wholehearted cooperation. I thank QM section for all necessary PA arrangements. Once again, I thank you one and all for being with us to make this day memorable, fruitful, and inspirational one. 
Thank you very much. With these words, I now request everyone to kindly rise for national anthem. <laughs>